Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Dennis Eversmann. I'm from Germany. My background is physics and currently I'm working as a freelancer in the field of data science. In this video I want to present uh, the results of my final project in the scope of the course Deep Learning given by Soran Georgievich in spring 2019. The goal of my final project is to predict the usage of LTE cells, which are used in mobile telecommunication networks. Therefore, I used a CNN LSTM autoencoder model and compared it to a normal LSTM model. It turned out that the autoencoder model was faster and the performance on the test data was even better. After performing a hyperparameter scan in order to identify the best parameters of the model, I extended uh, the input data by using all 57 cells uh, given in the data. Finally, I compared the prediction with the true data in order to identify anomalies in the time series. But let's go into a deeper discussion used in the analysis can be found at kegel.com and contains hourly traffic data for 57 LTE cells between October 2017 and 2018. So in total we have one year of data. Uh, the data is given in megabytes per hour. Of course, you can imagine that the data has seasonal behavior like hourly or daily, weekly patterns and in addition a constant trend uh, where, the de uh, where the traffic is increasing over the time. As usual, the data had issues. For some timestamps, uh, no data was recorded. This missing data was included by adding NAN values for all cells for this timestamp into the data. In addition, some days had less than 24 hour timestamps. Therefore, we had to add NAN values as well. In addition, we imputed the missing NAN values by the mean value of each individual time series of each cell. Afterwards, the data was scaled with the standard scaler of sklearn in order to make it readable for the neural network. In the next step, I created a feature space for each label by using the preceding cell usages of the individual cells, which is shown in the upper sketch. Afterwards, the data was split into a training and into a test data set. Uh, the test data set contains the last week of the whole data set. Finally, the shape of the input data is as follows. First, we just multiply the hours by the days in the data set minus the test data set and the second dimension is given by the preceding timestamps used as a feature space and the third dimension is given as the number of time series taken into account in the analysis. For each model architecture I created a function. Each function takes four arguments, where the first argument is the number of timestamps, the second argument is the number of features, which is equivalent to the number of preceding values taking into account for the prediction. The third argument is the number of LSTM cells, and the fourth argument, in the case of a CNN, network is the number of filters used in the CNN network. The sequential model for the pure LSTM model was easy. I took a gated recurrent unit 
followed by a dense layer of 100 nodes uh, and activation value and at the finally a dense layer with one node in order to predict the final timestamp. The mean squared error was given as a loss function. I took the atom optimizer and in order to record the metric I take the mean squared error. The encoder model is a little bit more complex. Here for the first layer I choose a convolutional layer in order to identify structures in the time series, followed by a max pooling layer which reduces the complexity of the data. Afterwards we have to flatten the outcome of the max pooling layer to a 1D time series vector and repeat this flatten vector by the number of cells which are taken into account in the analysis. This repeated vector is now feed into an LSTM cell uh, which is followed by a flatten vector and then put into a dense layer where the number of cells in the analysis defines the number of cells. The loss function, the optimizer and the metric is chosen the same as in the pure LSTM model. And for the convolutional layer, I uh, decided to have a kernel size of 3. The activation function yields value and the filter is a free parameter in order to scan for an optimized parameter space. In order to get a better understanding of the using, used model, uh, a sketch of the model is shown in the lower part of the screen. You can see that the convolutional layer and the pooling layer uh, serves as the encoding part of the model. This means that the encoder generates output data which obtains important structure of the input data. So you can say that the data of the input layer is compressed to the most important features and is then fed into the flattened layer and repeated in order to make it readable for the LSTM layer. Here the LSTM layer works as the decoding part of the model where the Features, the most important features, are decoded into the time series which are uh, given by the usage of the LTE cells. In order to compare the performance of both models, the training setup was the same for both architectures. We took 30 epochs, a batch size of 24, We've chosen six LSTM cells, four CNN filters for the CNN autoencoder model, and 24 preceding timestamps. The training process was performed on the cell ID 001801. On the left hand side, the results of the Manila model are shown. In blue, uh, you can see the true data, where in red, the predicted data is shown. Uh, it turns out that the RMS is given by 1.04, whereas the runtime of the model is given by 435 seconds. One can see that the daily pattern is very well predicted by the model. However, the high peak usages during the afternoons and evenings are badly predicted in this model. On the right hand side, you see the results of the CNN LSTM autoencoder model. Again, in red, you see the predicted, whereas in blue, you see the true data. The RMS turned out to be um, 0.95 and is better than for the pure LSTM model. And especially the runtime is a factor 7 smaller than for the vanilla LSTM model. Especially the high peak usage is better predicted for the autoencoder model.
One can also observe that those two days, which are the weekends, are also very well predicted, where you do not have the high peaks during the, the evenings. After showing that the auto encoder model outperforms the pure vanilla LSTM model, I performed a hyperparameter scan in order to identify the best parameter space for the autoencoder model. It turns out that a model which bets a batch size of 24, 6 LSTM cells, 4 filters and 36 preceding time, span, time stamps performs best. Especially the runtime is also close to the minimum runtime for the whole uh, for the whole parameter space. Finally, we choose the best model given by the hyperparameter scan in order to predict the time series of all cells given in the dataset, meaning 57 cells simultaneously. The model summary is shown on the right hand side. You can see that the parameters increased since the input shape of the data increased by a factor of 57. Especially the last layer, which is now a dense layer of the shape of 7, 57, uh, increases the number of parameters drastically. The results of the multi-series uh, CNN LSTM autoencoder model uh, was an RMS of 1.03 with a runtime of more than 2000 seconds. After the prediction of all time series, um, we can now detect anomalies given in the cell usage of the LTE cells. Therefore, I calculate the difference between the predicted value and the true value. A histogram of all time series and all cells is given on the right hand side of this slide. One can observe that the distribution is a little skewed to the right hand side, meaning that more values are underestimated than overestimated by the prediction. Additionally, uh, a time series is shown at the bottom at, uh, on this slide where the anomalies are indicated by red circles. An anomaly is defined as an absolute difference between the predicted value and the true value of 2.5. So in this case, this model was very bad in predicting the structure during the weekend for this specific cell. In my project, I have shown that CNN LSTM autoencoder models outperform pure vanilla LSTM models uh, for time series prediction of LTE cell usages. Thanks to Doran's informative and good lecture, I was able to build my own model and get a deeper understanding of the concepts of deep learning. Thanks a lot and see you guys. Bye bye.